guys. Um, it's Rachel here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me today, both Facebook and YouTube. Although this is not on YouTube yet, but it will be as soon as I'm finished. This sermon today is called Songbook. Basically, as many of you know, I love music, so I'm going to uh, relate each part of this sermon to a song that I was listening to. I have so much in my heart to talk about. Okay, first, um, I want to say thank you to everyone to all my new subscribers, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. And and uh, I'm so honored that you have found my minis- the ministry that God has um, graced me with. And, I'm so, and I hope you're being blessed by it. So thank you for, for that so much. And uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, And I was thinking when I was, um, because I watch um, Elevation Church every week. I consider that my, my home away from home. And last week, um, they were saying that Pastor Stephen, Pastor Stephen Furick, um, the lead pastor of that wonderful church, has got his sixth book coming out in February called The New You. And as I, because it, it's taken from a sermon series that he uh, did uh, in, oh, a few months ago now. He did a series called The New You, talking about the, both the, the, the new you, like brand new, like N-E-W, and the new you, the the you that God knew. It's a powerful sermon series. If you go to the Elevation Church channel, you can you can find that series. It is phenomenal. Um, and as I was thinking about the new you, uh, um, he was talking about it in two different ways. Uh, as I said, the brand, the brand new you, like the, the new you that comes came to Christ, and the you that God knew and how to discover those things. Um, and I was, I was thinking of um, that sermon series, and I was thinking. Um, it's not so much new, but undiscovered, um, because, like, there are so many things about us that God knows and we don't know. So the challenge in every life, one of the challenges in every life is to discover the undiscovered you. And I was thinking of the song by James Morrison that says, I'm not lost, just undiscovered. A lot of people think they're lost 
but they're just undiscovered. They don't know themselves. They don't know uh, what to do with their lives. They're lacking purpose. They're just wandering aimlessly. So the challenge in, in one's life is to discover yourself. And discovery is a lifelong process. And I think when you discover yourself, it is a journey. That's what you have to remember, that none of us have fully discovered ourselves. And we won't fully discover ourselves until we get to glory and God reveals us to us. But until then, we'll get bits and pieces and it will be a journey. And that journey comes through trying new things and and daring to step out of your comfort zone and sitting with the Lord and really uncovering the undiscovered you. So it's about uncovering the undiscovered you because the you that God knew is is already there. It's always been there from conception. You just have to uncover it. And your journey throughout your life is to uncover that you. It's not a new you, it's an undiscovered you. Uh, And to uncover that undiscovered you, it takes time, it takes a journey, it takes self-awareness, it takes trying new things. It takes being daring. So be easy on yourself in the process of uncovering that undiscovered you. And it's a journey to work out all the all the kinks and how does this work and just know that it's a journey and know that how however you think somebody's got got it all together, they're uncovering that undiscovered part of themselves and you won't get to fully discover yourself until you pass on and are with the Lord in heaven because he knows you. He knows the purpose and the destiny in you and the job of every human being is to uncover the undiscovered you. So I don't, I don't really think it's a new you respectfully to Pastor Stephen. I think it's a more undiscovered you. And I think the journey of of someone's life is to uncover that undiscovered you. And that journey is different for every person. That journey is full of bumps and bruises and triumphs and and happiness and joy and pain and mistakes and times where you get it right. So be easy in the process of discovery and recovery. Because in one's life, we all have to um, recover something and discover something. We We often think of recovery as in alcoholics and drugs, but all recovery is, is, is taking back what was originally there. 
like it's taking back uh, what was originally there. So you don't, you don't even have to just recover uh, from drugs and alcohol. You can recover your joy. You can recover your peace. And we're all in the process of recovery and discovery of ourselves. We're all in the process of taking something back, of healing, of maturing, of of really getting to know ourselves and know that we're we're all in that process. And some people are further ahead and some people are further behind. But your journey is your journey. And, and wherever you are in the process, know that you're not alone. Know that there's no shame to get us to get it discovered quickly because you will never discover all you, um, all of who you are until you get to heaven. But you will discover and learn through life some of the pieces of who you are. And in every circumstance, it's like, what has this come to teach me? Every circumstance, every triumph, every trial is a lesson in it. And the key to learning is to find the lesson in each circumstance, in circumstance of strategy and triumph. And that's how you un start to uncover the undiscover you. And basically just sitting with yourself and asking the hard questions to the one who's made you and who knows you. And that is another way to un uncover the undiscovered you. And it's not exhaustive. Exhaustive. I'm still learning about myself. I'm still uncovering the undiscovered me. Uncovering what I like and don't, what I'm looking for and I'm not and whatever. And that's okay. So that's the first song in my songbook. Not not lost, but undiscovered. Um, and then I was thinking of, um, I was listening to a song by Kelsey Ballerini last night about the I Miss Me More, uh, where she talks about um, this, this guy she was with. He sounds like a really controlling guy. And now he's, she's like, you made me wear high heel shoes. You didn't want me to wear, no, you didn't want me to wear high heel shoes because you thought I would be taller than you. You didn't want me to do this. I put my own music at the back of the closet because you didn't want to hear it. But now I took it out and danced to it. He, she's like, I thought I would miss you, but I miss me more. And I, as I was listening to this last night, I was thinking of uh, sin. And we often, uh, we often think sin is just uh, anything that takes you uh, from the from the original. Uh, uh, plan and purpose of God for your life. Um, so, so I was thinking of this, 
and I was thinking of you may like what you're doing, you may like uh, the, the sin you're partaking in, and you may not. But what he wants me to ask you today is, don't, don't you miss, miss you more? Don't you, don't you miss that, that, like, that time when you first believed and just was so eager to get into the presence of God, and you, and you were discovering the true you, and you were just, um, you were just embracing the true you, because what sin does, when you're out of the plan and the purpose of God for your life, it takes you away from who you were originally intended to be so far that you feel you can't get back. And, and the Lord wants you to know that you can come back and you don't have to miss yourself. You can get back to the original intention uh, that he had for your life just by asking. And he's there to welcome you. And, like, it may be fun for a while to be a little rebellious and and uh, re really kind of disobedient, but sometimes it it'll take you, it'll stop being fun, and you'll you'll want to get back to the um, to the period who you were before you started lying, before you started cheating, before you started doing whatever you're doing, and it. Sin doesn't have to be um, the sins that we think of, you know, sex or drugs or whatever. The sin could be um, procrastination. The sin could be a, like, um, backbiting and not being totally honest with a person. Like, it doesn't have to be the big sin. It... It's anything that takes you from the from the original intention of God for your life. So he's like, don't you miss me more than you like? Don't you miss you more than you like what you're doing? You know that you don't like what you're doing. You're just afraid to admit it. You know it's no longer fun anymore to do what you're doing. And you're probably just tempted to turn this off because I'm hitting a nerve. He's like, don't you miss you more? Don't you miss that original part of you that yearned for me and now you're just going to church because you feel you have to and you're kind of being all resentful because your Sunday morning is taken up in church. But you don't tell anyone, but you've gotten away from the original intention that God wants a willing heart, a willing spirit. God doesn't want going to church to be drudgery and something you have to do. God wants to God wants going to church and be worshiping with his people to be something you get to do. He's like, don't you miss you more? You've been taken up with so many things and you've lost who you are. You've been taken up in, in the makeup. You've been taken up on which guy or girl you're going out with or how, how many lights you have or whatever. And he's saying, 
that's not you. That's sin. I want you to come back to, to me. Because he's saying, don't you miss you more when you were on YouTube just for fun? When you, when you loved doing videos and you weren't so concerned about likes? Or, or you weren't so concerned about comments? But you put up videos, not for the business aspect of it, but you put up videos for the love of, of sharing what you were sh sharing, the love of being a reactor, the love of doing makeup tutorials, the love of doing whatever you do, cooking tutorials, whatever you do. But it's become work for you because um the the love for for it has gone out the window and he's saying don't you miss you more he's saying come back to your original intention and and love it but don't let it take over your life Love whatever you love, but don't let it take over your life. Do it in a way that, do whatever in a way that is healthy. Don't, don't let anything or anyone take over your life. And if you were like the girl in this song, letting a guy control her or letting letting a person, I should say, control her. Nobody deserves to control you. T take your, take the power that God has given you over yourself back. Don't give that power away to anyone who doesn't mean you well. And let's take this off of guy, girl. It could be um, partner relationships. It could be friendships. It could be any relationships. When, when another person is having, pow having what they perceive as power over someone else, that is, that is, wrong. It is not what God has intended for you. To, for, so, for another human being to tell you what to do or to tell you where to go or say you can't be here. But there is help and there is life after that. And honey, you deserve more. You deserve more than that. You deserve joy, you deserve peace, you don't, you don't deserve stress, and if you feel you can't get, get away, he's opening a door for, for you right now. Reach out to someone if you can, I know it's difficult, but just take one step at a time. Just take one step at a time, one little step at a time, and and he's opening up, opening up the way for you to freedom right now. Freedom is possible. Thank you. And um, I I was also listening to uh, the song "I'll Be There" by by Jesse you, Jesse Jesse you Lynn it was so good and this song is just a simple reminder about how the Lord will always be there for us even when it's dark in the happy times and the sad times and the times when we uh, don't know he will always be there for us. Um, 
And it's a really just encouragement to say that we're not alone. To know that he will always be there for us. He will always be there to guide and offer wisdom. He's like, why are you trying to do this alone? I'm here. Ask for wisdom and I'll give liberally. And there's no shame to ask for wisdom. A lot of us feel feel like we need to know everything. We need to do this alone. But we don't because we're not alone. There's God, but there's also other people that are just waiting to help us, but they don't know we need help unless we ask. And he's saying, He'll be there for us whatever we need and other people um, are there for us. And if you feel you have nobody, there are organizations um, that are there to help you and with whatever you need. There are books. There's always a way to get to get the information, to get the understanding that you need. And know that whatever situation you are in, there is someone who has come out of it. There are so, There is someone who is going in it. There are someone who that same situation hasn't hit yet. And don't be afraid to pass on your wisdom about whatever to, uh, to whoever you need to. And another thing I was thinking about this week to end this sermon was um, I've been putting up my old old uh, Facebook sermons on YouTube. And um, I was I was putting up my sermons uh, from 2021 on YouTube, and there are a lot of them on Facebook. Oh, my gosh. When I said I would do it, I didn't know how many there were. But when I'm going through them, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that was amazing and all that stuff. And I, and I found myself thinking to myself, I will never be able to preach like that again and get kind of um, down and competitive. And I'm like, those sermons are so good. How can I top them? And he said, you don't have to top them. Just speak my word. He's like, those words were for that time. And yes, they were prophetic, and yes, they were amazing, but there is still more inside of you, and it's not a competition with yourself, with yourself, or to get the, to, to get better with your servants, all you have to do is preach my word, and even if you don't think it's good, it could heal, restore, deliver, someone. So sometimes we get down on ourselves because we don't think we can do that. We can do that again or we're not able to do that again. Um, He's saying you don't have to do it again. That was for that time. I will give you words in your life for now. You don't have to worry about uh, what you said then or topping what you said then. You just have to preach. You know, you just have to do what you do now. Because remember, that was a stage for then. This is a stage for now. You're not the same person as you were then. You're not a better person. You're not a worse person. You're just a different person. 
what you're going through now is different. Your understanding now is different. It's not better or worse, it's just different. And yes, people will will learn from what you said then, but it doesn't mean that what you say now is less significant because it may not be getting uh, the likes or it may not be getting the cares or it may not be getting the loves. It's just different. He's like, don't define yourself by by trying to top yourself. You, you, you get better as you go along through life. But when it comes from the word, uh, when it comes to uh, the word of God for your business, the word of God for your life, don't look at it as better or worse. Just look at it as different or that with a different time. Because each t- each season in your life requires a different word from God. Each season in your life requires a different strategy from God. It's not better or worse. It's just different. And it's good to look back and celebrate what God did then, but you also have to move forward and celebrate what God is doing in your life now. You can't live in your your past and say, like I said, Oh, I will never be able to preach like that again. That was so prophetic. That was so good. I just have to move on and concentrate on what God is doing now and what God is teaching me now and learn from what God taught me then. But I can't stay there. I just have to continue learning and growing. And there is no song for this one, but I I just thought I'd tell you what has been ruminating on my mind this week. So guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye. I hope this sermon blesses you. See you next week. Bye.